Boy, I gotta say, it's one heck of a time to be on the internet today. We have things like Meta Presents, Twitter, and Green Twitch just dominating the headlines, and not in a great way. Not to mention a plethora of other copycat applications just trying to get their slice of that pie. But as we revel in the Discord, I, my ancient gamer self, think back to a time where we used to have a curse plaguing the lands. Yeah, that's right, we're gonna talk about Curse LLC today. When I first started doing research for this video, I thought this was going to be a simple story about how Discord had borrowed some of Curse's best features and used them to make a much better program. But when I started digging around, I actually found a much more interesting story to cover. So keep your arms and legs inside the ride at all times, folks, because we are now going on the adventure of the story of Curse LLC. Let us begin our adventure all the way back in 2006. This is our friend, Hubert Theblot a fellow adventurer who, like many of us during this era, was consumed by a crippling addiction to the world of Warcraft. Instead, though, of letting his addiction consume him and make him live in his mom and dad's basement for all time, he saw an opportunity to turn it into a lucrative venture. After bidding farewell to his college education, yeah, he dropped out, Hubert wasted no time in transforming his love for WoW into a money-making machine. You see, as amazing as the game was, Hubert recognized its potential for improvement. With determination in his heart, he set out to create a website that would revolutionize the way players organized and shared their WoW modifications, add-ons, and plugins. Thus, Curse LLC was born, a name that would go on to forge an empire. So for those of you who are not new here, you know that I like to dig into a little bit of the company's background. And Hubert needed some help. He wasn't going to make this massive empire by himself. So who was his first hire? Well, fun fact, it was actually his brother. I'm introducing here, Blank Theblot. Yeah, we couldn't find his name, so he's just gonna be Jimothy. In all seriousness though, I did dig really deep to try to find his brother's name. That dude is really good at being anonymous. As Curse's employee roster continued to grow, so did the company's ambitions. Not content to rest on their laurels, Curse embarked on a mission to create new, high-profile websites and acquire those that posed fierce competition. Among those many triumphs, one of Curse's greatest wins came from the acquisition of MMO Champion, an esteemed platform that boasted an impressive 80 million monthly page views and attracted 7 million unique visitors. Hubert Theblot, the visionary behind Curse, astutely predicted that this addition would contribute around 300 million page views per month, further bolstering Curse's already impressive reach. It was a classic case of big fish eating little fish. As Curse solidified its position as a dominant force in the digital realm, an astonishing 220 million page views were attributed to its name. Speaking of big fish, little fish, today's sponsor is... No one. I can't be sponsored yet, but I mean, I'm also being sponsored by the... You know, money's money. If you'd like to help me on my journey of being sponsored, be sure to go and drop a like on this video here, especially if you're already enjoying the content so far. All right, so Curse is sitting pretty now. They are absolutely killing it. But despite the old adage, only spending money won't make you any money. So how were they making money? Well, there were two main avenues of making money for this company ad revenue, and their premium subscriptions. The premium features for this were a one-click update for all their add-ons. This was absolutely huge to the MMO crafters of the world. Higher download bandwidth, cloud backup saves, and syncs. They really paved the future on this one. They were way ahead of their time. Keep in mind, this was back in 2010 at the latest. Purchasing this package also came with an ad-free viewing experience. With Curse now making some big waves in the gaming industry, recognition started rolling in. Inc. 500 had announced that Curse was the 405th fastest growing company of 2011, and the rewards don't stop there. Theblot himself was a semi-finalist in the Ernst & Young, Young Entrepreneurs of Northern California just in 2012, one year later. And with that recognition, Curse started raking in 21 million unique viewers per month. With no sign of stopping, Curse continued to gobble up the competition, this time expanding into the wizardly world of the coast, specifically MTG. No, not, not that MTG, the good one, this one. Good one? Survey set! 
No, no, it's not. There's, there's no winning here. This deal took a lot of time to complete, and a few corgis may or may not have exchanged some hands, but it was finalized on December 17th of 2012. This was not even the most significant thing that Curse had accomplished this year. That would actually be Gamepedia. This was a brand new website that would give you information about video games, and originally they had 90 different wikis that you could go to to gather information about. That may not seem like an impressive amount of wikis, but the articles are certainly impressive. They had a total of 244,332 articles at launch. If you're still not impressed with that number, don't worry. That was soon to rapidly expand with their Suggest a Wiki feature. Gamepedia was in direct competition with Wikia, which is now known as Fandom, and we'll talk about them a little bit later in the video. Things seem to be going really well for the Curse Crew, and 2014 was set to be one of their biggest years. At this time, another game was ruling the internet. No longer was it Horde v Alliance, but instead Red vs Blue. Or was it purple back then? League of Legends was growing in popularity as both a game and an eSport. The team at Curse noticed this game's success, and like they did with WoW, they began to work on adding missing functionality to the client and game. This was via the launch of Curse Voice. Now we had another voice comm software before with TeamSpeak and Skype, but these were nothing compared to what Curse Voice would become. To keep it straight with you there, Curse was Discord before Discord was even a twinkle in its daddy's eye. As you will see, Curse has a plethora of features that were eventually adopted by somebody. At launch, Curse Voice had text messaging, voice chat, video chat, screen sharing, and a friend system and servers as well. League was chosen as an early focus for Curse Voice, and to stand out for the massive player base that game had, Curse did what they do best and made add-ons to make the League experience better. This included an in-game voice overlay, which Discord has now, an auto matchmaking service that would connect the person to their in-game team, a friend system, and private servers. Curse also made it much easier to connect with the use of URL links to join sessions. So here's a fun fact for you. When originally Curse had pitched this to Riot, Riot had rejected it, stating that use of a third party system to calculate the timers on Baron and Dragon gave a clear competitive advantage to those who were using Curse compared to those who were not using Curse. But I do think Curse was onto something because if we play League of Legends now, you can see clearly in the base game, they have integrated timers for not only Baron, but also different buffs in the jungles. Curse did go ahead and go work their client a little bit more and ended up making the client compliant, <laughs> client compliant, to, to Riot's needs. Riot Games may have invested $30 million into Curse, but League was not the only game they were working with. Curse once again was doing what it does best. It started working on an integration with other popular games, but one game embraced Curse so much it helped shape the community, and that game was Smite. Smite is was okay no is a highly competitive MOBA where you scrape all the gods out of the toy box of all human history and smash them together to see who reigns supreme but it still had one problem that most MOBAs had you needed voice comms introducing curse integration curse integration with smite was widely accepted by the community as they now had a way that they could all speak to each other in game it got so bad, actually, that they eventually ended up going full Apple user and started shaming people who were not using Curse Voice. Curse went above and beyond for the Smite team. They even went as far as anticipating some big concerns that the game designers didn't even know that they had. Curse had preemptively installed ways to combat online trolls from, well, trolling. The ability to mute players was part of Curse, as well as the ease of creating new chats that would exclude the trolls. This was an effective measure that defined in-game integrated voice chat as a must-have for online gaming. Smite was actually the first MOBA to have a text-based and voice-based chat system, which ended up being replicated, <laughs> poorly mind you, by Riot Games. So yeah, sounds like a legit chat system, bro, right? Absolutely, absolutely. But what was the rest of the company doing? Great question. They were also kicking ass. Curse had also spun off into what they called Curse Entertainment. What this allowed them to do was to be able to create videos for YouTube, which you're still able to find on the web here today. But more importantly, Curse Forge had done something that not even Twitch would do. They created a rewards program, which allowed the creators of the mods and add-ons to have a 70% revenue split 
of the content that they were generating. That's fantastic. Before the acquisition, Curse had one more gift to give to the world, and that was... D&D Beyond? Is that right? All right, I guess Curse did create D&D Beyond. Really though, this should not be a surprise. With how heavily invested Curse was with Wizards of the Coast's other project, Magic the Gathering, we should have seen this coming. I do not believe that it's too much of a stretch to say, with how successful D&D Beyond has become, this will be the legacy of Curse and its employee. As it seems to be with capitalism, these big waves Curse was making garnered the attention of a much, much bigger fish. That fish being Amazon via Twitch.tv. On August 16th of 2016, Amazon had announced it acquired Curse for an undisclosed amount. We will circle back for just a moment and say that Twitch may have had a hand in creating D&D Beyond as it was released in 2017, but these kinds of projects take a long time to develop and although I couldn't find any proof, I suspect it was already in development when Twitch snagged up Curse. So Curse and Twitch are now married and that's great, right? M maybe, but the question still stands, why did Twitch want Curse in the first place? They didn't really seem at place to grab them. Well, if we ask Emmett Shear, they state that we've been long fans of Curse, which is an innovator in the games industry with a strong culture built around its offerings. That sounds great. And maybe that was true for portions of the company, but it did seem that Twitch had taken a bigger interest in Gamepedia more so than the other things that Curse was offering. It didn't take long for Twitch to move all branding of Curse under its massive umbrella. April of 2017, the Curse desktop app was rebranded into the Twitch app, and as part of this migration, the Curse premium program was shut down. But its premium features were released to every single user. Things seemed to be going really well at first. Twitch seemed to embrace Curse and its strengths by allowing CurseForge to work directly with their desktop app, making add-ons and mods just as easy as before. Twitch even started embedding live streams on wiki pages to current streamers playing said game on the Gamepedia, creating a whole new layer of immersion for the site. Gamepedia was a very important part of this acquisition, and in my opinion, the main reason that Amazon and Twitch had targeted Curse LLC. You see, back in 2018, some shady things were going on. Facebook had broke the news by making a view counting no-no, which caused their, their views to be inflated by 150 to 900 <laughs> percent. Yikes! But how does this relate to Twitch? Unlike today, Twitch was real loosey-goosey with their viewing count and counted bots as well as anyone scrolling past a live streamer that was embedded in the Gamepedia wiki. Now, I'm not saying Twitch bought Curse to be able to artificially inflate their view numbers for more ad revenue because I have no proof of this. But it can be inferred with the information of how views were counted at the time. The news of Facebook getting wrist slapped for this and the timeliness of the sale of Gamepedia and Curse Media. It was sold to fandom on December 12th of 2028. That's all just a little too suspicious for me. I will say the more likely reason that this sale occurred was due to the Twitch affiliate program that was launched in 2017. Twitch now had a lot more money going to streamers in 2018 than ever before. It's possible that the sale was to cut costs on employee salary and overhead for keeping Gamepedia alive. Regardless of the true reason, Gamepedia was subsequently gobbled up by fandom, their once longtime rivals, thus putting the rivalry to an end for good. Twitch, however, did keep a couple of assets of Curse, namely CurseForge and Curse Voice. And they also kept the integratedness of CurseForge into Curse Voice. They just ended up wrapping it in a nice purple packet. The days of the Twitch desktop app were numbered, however, and a swift decline came after the sale of Curse Entertainment. The voice functionality ended on February of 2019. This included all instant messaging, voice chat, video chat, and group messaging, effectively removing the biggest competition to Discord. Things got worse though. On June 22nd of 2020, it was announced that Overwolf would be purchasing Curse Forge from Twitch for an undisclosed sum. This meant that the integrated functionality to the Twitch app was cut off as of December 2nd of 2020. The Twitch app was now just a redundant viewing platform for Twitch that they eventually stopped supporting as of April 30th of 2022. 
Curseforge is still owned by Overwolf, which in my opinion is actually a great place for Curse. With my limited interaction with Overwolf, it does feel like what Curse initially sought out to be, a hub for add-ons and modifications for your favorite games. You see, it was kind of funny that Twitch had it in the first place, seemed a little bit out of place. However, it does recently seem like Twitch might be in a little bit of trouble, because since they've sold off their Curse assets, they really have not been innovating much in the space and they've been seeing a lot more competition lately. But this video is not entirely about Twitch. What happened to the rest of Curse's stuff? Curse Media had one more stop after being acquired by Fandom. They were sold to Magic Find, but this was but a shell of what Curse used to be. The biggest move in this situation was for D&D Beyond, which was garnering popularity. This popularity made it all the way up to Hasbro who sniffed them out. You see, Hasbro wanted to create a site like D&D Beyond, but why make it when you can just devour it? In April 13th of 2022, that's exactly what Hasbro did as they acquired D&D Beyond for $146 million. That's a nice little payday for fandom. And that brings us over to today, where Curse is gone, but certainly not forgotten. Their assets may be scattered across the internet, but their shining beacon of D&D Beyond shows us how great this company had once been. And it does leave one to question. Twitch certainly was the executioner of this company. Had Twitch never acquired them, what would things be like? Well, personally, I think that Discord would have some sizable competition, which would drive both competitors to be more innovative and work for the consumer. But what do you think? What do you think would have happened to Curse LLC if Twitch had never acquired them? Would they still be here? Would they still be a heavy hitting competitor for both uh, Discord as well as different mod groups out there? Would fandom be as big as they are? Let me know in the comments. I look forward to reading your thoughts on this. Uh, but definitely, if you liked what you saw here, go ahead and hit this video with a like and subscribe to the account so you can find more videos. And I can't wait to see you on the next one.